Moses had a short temper. He says, you stiff neck ripples, must I also get water from the rock for you? He was a man, he got agitated. He was a man, he got angry. He was a man, he looked at weaknesses. He looked at their hinder parts. But God was in the heart of Moses. One time God says, one side Moses, let me finish these people. I'll raise another generation. Look at a man who has met God, who with the love of God is pulsating in their heart. The prophet says he threw himself in the path of God's wrath. The wrath of God was going to finish them, but Moses stood in the gap. We need ministers who can stand in the gap. We need ministers who can travail for souls. We need ministers who stay on Jordan until everyone is crossed over. We need ministers who stand with the ark of the living God and compromise with us. Demonstrate to the people what is the love of God. We need demonstrators. Don't tell us, show us. Don't just tell us, show us. Time of telling is over now. It's the harvest time now. Every seed must bring forth of its kind. It's a time now of claiming, claiming is too much now. Let's see what you produce at the end. Somebody say, praise the Lord. If you are not within my confines, you're not going to heaven. Where do you get that revelation? If you're not associated with me, you're not going to heaven. Where do you get that revelation? We're preaching here by the grace of God. If someone doesn't see eye to eye with Pastor Freddy here, we, and they invite us, we'll go and preach there. Yeah. We'll go and preach there. Yeah. Oh, my friend, you know the brother I, I admire so much. Oh, my, doesn't agree with that one. I also excommunicate. Where do you get that revelation? Yeah. Malachi 4 says, you throw a little circle, throw a little circle. I throw a big one. I put all of your mouths. That's what, don't just say what the prophet, do what he has done. He demonstrated that. After some few years, God has blessed with some people and some souls and this and the other. And then you think you've got the greatest gift amongst all. There's nothing like that. You must know Satan has visited you now. Just check that revelation. We need one another. This pulpit is a demonstration that we need one another. At some stage, it was a tree in the forest there. We didn't need a plane. You didn't need a brush. You needed a hacksaw or an axe that can chop this thing and the pieces they fall where they are falling. He's not damaging the tree. He's got a revelation. I want to produce a pulpit out of this. I want to produce something precious about this. I'm not going to spread the feelings. I'm not going to spread the feelings. We are going to heaven. There's no feelings. No five senses there. We are going to heaven. We must walk by faith. Get some chain, drag this thing. Someone comes, he cuts. He cuts, someone comes, he measures. Someone comes, he designs. The corners and the dowel joints and everything. And then someone comes, he puts the, oh. Same spirit, different manifestation. Same spirit. You can't say the X is better than the plane. You can't say the brush is better than, no sir. If you've got a revelation, we are building this pulpit. We are building an image of Christ. We are building something special. Common denominator. We've got a common denominator. We want to see the image of Christ formed in the people. The prophet says something striking. He says, I wonder if you are not giving one another spirit. You are passing one another spirit. Instead of passing the spirit of Christ. The Holy Ghost is here to guide us. Every believer is compelling. You must have the Holy Ghost. It's a frustrating thing to worship with someone without the Holy Ghost. Because you'll always want to under explain things you'll never understand. Because the spiritual things are spirituality said. You'll never meet. These minds will never meet. It's oil and water. You'll always have meetings after meetings after meetings. It won't help. Those meetings won't help. Which meeting did I had in Genesis with God? No meeting. Just caught the revelation. And God was pleased. And there's Abel. These Christians who are babied too much. You must speak in a certain way. They're going to be grieved. You must, you must visit them. If you don't visit them two months, he hasn't visited me. I'm staying home. I want them to send some deacons to come and visit me. Shame on you. Are you here for men or God? The love of God. Deacons must not beg people to come to church. No, sir. The pastor must not beg people to pay tithes. If you don't pay tithes, you expose yourself of who you are. That's all. 
You don't need the pastor to tell you if you don't pay tithes. It's, no, no, no. If you don't pay tithes, you're just exposing yourself. What manner of person you are. If God himself, Elohim, came that you pay tithes. Live, you also pay tithes. Being in the loins of Abraham. He hey, pastor, t- trod with care. You know money, trod with care. You're not going to trod with care, nothing. It's scriptural. And this thing is so serious. This thing is so serious. That the people who comment too much in the church, this must be happening like this must be done. You watch them. They don't pay tithes. They know so much how is what going to be, but they don't pay tithes. Kebe, 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 kebe. Buy a righteous man, buy a righteous so sad. One time a pastor visited another one to come and minister. Then the pastor says, man of God, I must warn you, these are wonderful people. They love the word. Be at liberty, preachers, the Lord gives you the liberty. But I'm going to warn you, one brother here in the congregation. Many have suffered, many ministers knock out and polar punches and straight cuts and everything. When you preach the word, it gets so excited, it comes and do some, you will learn some serious fist on this brother. He says, oh, is that so, Pastor? He says, yeah. He says, don't worry, I'll handle it. God bless your heart. Then the man of God started preaching here. Yeah, people were happy and enjoying the word. The man came rushing here and was doing all those things. Oh, and he realized, oh, yeah. He continued on and preached. When the man came to the aisle running, he also ran the preacher. They met on the aisle. He left the pulpit. Then he whispered to his ears. He whispered to his ears. And then the preacher went. The man went long. Like a cat, that rain has fallen upon it. He went back and sat down so sheepishly, so ashamed he sat down like this. The congregation was stunned. The preacher was stunned. He was wondering, the pastor says, I can't wait for the meeting. I want to ask the man of God, what, is, what did you whisper to that man? That he's so well behaved. All of a sudden, he's so well behaved. There comes a time. Later on, after the service, he says, no, I just said these few words. I asked him a question. When did you last pay your tithes? That was a knockout. He was acting spiritual, but he was not worshiping God in a spiritual way. Giving is part of worship. 